Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a really simple nymph pattern. This one's coloured up to mimic a Hendrickson. It's a very adaptable one that you can use for lots of different species. The hook is an RX traditional nymph hook, size 12 to 16, and the thread is UTC 70 in light tan. To make the tails, I'm going to take some nicely speckled partridge fibres from a big feather down at the bottom of the cape, and then to the dub of the abdomen, so I'm going to use some red fox underfur, and this is a beautiful creamy white dubbing that packs down really nicely. To rip the abdomen, a nice fine stripped peacock quill to add some segmentation. Moving up towards the thorax, the thorax cover is going to be the, some speckled turkey wing, and finally to dub the thorax and provide some legginess, some natural cream seals fur. So to begin with, I've made a few wraps of lead that is going to form the foundation of the thorax, cast on my thread just behind the hook eye, run it over the lead to secure, and taken it down the length of the hook shank. I'm going to tie in my tails about the same length as the body, not too many, I think it's about seven or eight in this pinch here, and I've chosen a brown and speckled partridge feather. I'm not going to trim those butts off, I'm just going to tie them down all the way up towards the thorax, and that'll help to fill in the gap, especially if you do it on top of the hook shank. Otherwise there can be a bit of a step as you come up to where you've wrapped the lead. Working back down the hook shank, I'm going to tie in the peacock quill. Be fairly careful, don't put too much tension on it, it is very delicate, especially when it's this thin. That's everything tied in for the abdomen, so the next job is going to be to dub the body. If you don't have any red fox, a good substitute would be beaver under fur, or super fine dry fly dubbing, or anything that's this creamy yellow colour, but also dubs down nice and tight. This fly relies on the contrast between the dubbings of the abdomen and the thorax. The abdomen I'm aiming to keep fairly slim, so I've dubbed my fox almost to be like a felted tight rope. But up towards the thorax, the seal's fur is going to be a lot shaggier, and we're going to tease that out to represent the legs. You'll notice that otherwise there's no legs in this pattern. We're just going to rely on the different properties of the two dubbings we've chosen. With the abdomen finished, I'm now going to counter rip it, wrapping it in the opposite direction to the way I wrapped my dubbing. And that's not to add any structural strength, the peacock quill's far too flimsy a material for that. Instead, it's going to stop it from sinking in between those wraps of fur, which will help to keep it more on the surface and more visible even as the fly wears a little bit and that fur gets a little bit shaggier, just to keep that segmentation nicely visible. With the abdomen done, it's now time to tie in the thorax cover, and for that I've taken a slip of my turkey wing about the same width as the gape of the hook. I'm going to lay that on top of the hook shank, hold it in place with my off hand, and make a loose wrap of thread around the top, and then draw down. And that's aiming to keep it nicely on top and centred on the hook shank, so it'll fold forwards to make a really nice thorax cover. I'm going to make a few more touching turns backwards, just bringing that right up to the abdomen so there's no gap. Now coming in with the scissors, trim away the excess, and it's time to dub the body. This is what really saves a lot of time compared to doing, say, a hackled or a legged nymph. Just by teasing out that thorax dubbing, you can make a really nice bushy, impressionist fly that looks like legs. So I've built up a fairly bulky and fairly shaggy ball of my seal's fur up at the thorax, and then brushing that down on either side, we can fold th forward the thorax cover, make a couple of loops around with the thread, cinch down tightly to secure, and then lifting up, go around the hook eye, once more over the top, and a couple of times around the hook eye, and that's not going anywhere. Finally, I'm gonna come in with my whip finisher, make a double whip finish at the eye of the hook, just build up the faintest impression of a head underneath there, and then we can come in with our scissors, trim away the thread, trim away the thorax cover, and that's the fly done. Now of course you could leave it like this, really bushy and fairly wild, or you could manicure it a little bit. Either way I'm going to brush it down so those legs and gills and bits of fur are all pointing downwards, and you can see that that's going to make a really nice supple moving impression in the water. With that little bit of lead up at the head end, this fly will be a gentle sinker. So you can dead drift it or twitch it or slow retrieve. It can be really, really effective. Here's a look at the finished article. Very simple, very practical and easy enough to tie. So give this one a go. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.